Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today, I am bringing you a review for the long-awaited Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Galactic Odyssey Collection Botropolis Rescue Mission. This is the final Galactic Odyssey release coming to us from Amazon, and the last release officially under the Earthrise banner. So, you know, hats off. We, we did it, folks. <laughs> we got to the end of Earthrise. I mean, Kingdom's been out for months, but, you know, that's besides the point. So, um, you know, I would expect a full Earthrise retrospective at uh, some point soon after this review. And in my opinion here, I think they saved the best multi-pack for last. All the other ones have been, like, okay to meh. <laughs> this one I think is just really cool and creative. You get two modulators, two MicroMaster teams. They're all color-coordinated and themed together, and they're meant to actually become a part of Skylynx's base mode. So I love the synergy there. And, you know, these are all not very high demand characters, but it's just something creative and unique and different. And I think that's something Transformers, honestly, has been kind of lacking recently. You know, they've been playing it really safe with their character choices and all that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing this review. So if you've seen my videos before, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at the toys packaging. Then we'll open it up. We'll see everything inside. We'll look at the instructions, the planetary tech spec card. And then we'll see the toys themselves in their alt modes, or robot modes, combined modes. We're going to have a lot of fun because it's a very modular set. I'll be bringing in Skylinks, of course, for the big group shot. Do some other group shots and comparisons. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So our new pack comes in the standard select style mailer box type getup. This one is very flat but very long because you got, what, six toys? No. Yeah, six toys in here all together. And uh, so you got your usual hex pattern, the branding, name of the subline. It says Botropolis here. You get your Botropolis symbol that wraps around, which is pretty cool. You get your label here that tells you what's all inside. And then just some miscellaneous stuff here. Whoop. Throwing things, guys. That's how excited I am. All right, now I very sloppily cut this label. Did a terrible job there. Let's open this up. Whoa. All right, so you get your standard insert for this Galactic Odyssey set with just kind of a layout of their you know, small part of the universe. You got the names of the five different planets featured in the collection. So again, always very nice. Pull this out. Oh, look at all this cool stuff we get. Yeah. So you get Over Air, who's a redeco of Airwave, and also named after Airwave's Japanese Autobot equivalent. So he's essentially, you know, Airwave's Japanese Autobot equivalent. Then you get a redeco of Ironworks as just himself again, which I think it's a shame they didn't change his name and make a new bot, but oh well. You get a missile, which is, uh, you know, done up to look like a, a rocket booster you know, for a space shuttle. And it's actually taken from the Double Dealer toy. So that's a really cool little accessory that he's kind of added in there. You get your Space uh, MicroMaster team here. And these guys, as far as I know, are just the same as the standard releases, as far as their identities. And then you get a new team here that combines to form like a little missile carrier thing. And it comes with a new accessory to go on top. So yeah, a lot going on there. I like it. Here we get the instructions, and this is a big one because we got a lot going on. So you get the name of the set here, renders of all the toys. Open this up. Ooh, it's big. That's a big one. Come on. There we go. I love this. All right. So first up, you get Ironworks. So yeah, see, they didn't change his name. And you get what appears to be the... What is this? Break down into his components, I think, up top. Uh, you get one of his base modes, like the tower-like base mode. You get the more standard Ironworks base mode. You get uh, this new base mode, which I'm assuming is supposed to be how like the little uh, space station type base goes together. So that's neat, I like that. All right, here's our, our new set of MicroMasters. So you get Missile Master, and then you get Moon Rock. So that's kind of cool. And then you can transform them, combine them, add the little missile thing. 
All very neat. On the back, we get over air. And he keeps the same aircraft carrier type alt mode. Gets the battle station alt mode. Gets the airport like alt mode. So he doesn't seem to get a new configuration, but he does attach to ironworks. And hmm, that's interesting. They're not showcasing that third base mode that they showed for ironworks. Huh. I don't know what that's about. All right, then you get your Space Micromasters. Again, they're still just Fuser and Blastmaster, so nothing new there. They can turn into kind of individual vehicles-ish. A full NASA-style space shuttle, and then they can also be mounted on top of that big rocket booster slash missile thing and uh, be put on top of the airport mode of overair. And then, you know, just combine everything together. So that's, that's weird. They're showcasing Ironworks' standard alt mode for the big base, despite the fact that they got this going on here. So, interesting. I'm not sure what that's about. And then, set this aside, and we'll take a look at our tech spec card. So, here's a picture of Botropolis, the name, symbol, branding, all that. And then the actual tech spec readout says Roving Comet. Terrain, mobile and densely populated city. Sector, Outer Rim 1. Coordinates, Zone 3, District 1836, Aspect 4. Known hazards, Rogue Mercenaries. A lot of mercenaries there. Primary life forms, Gobots. Resources, Gobrillium, a flexible metallic element. Detected. Key data, civilization built on a mobile comet. Inhabitant service protectors to other planets in need. So, again, I probably should have pointed this out, but Botropolis is the Transformers equivalent of the planet Gobotron from the Gobot series. So, just kind of a rebranding of that planet. In this case, it's more of a comet than a planet. And that's where the Gobots live. Now, I will say, one criticism, as much as I love this set for what it is, it just has absolutely nothing to do with Gobots or Gobotron or anything. I don't, it's such a weird missed opportunity because we have all these new molds, both current and within the last few years, especially in like the um, Legends to small deluxe size range, that could easily be repurposed into GoBots like they did for eHobby, right? We already got Bug Bite as part of the Selects line. We got one and there's just all the other ones you could do, right? We got like the new Warpath, which I guess he's Kingdom, so maybe he's too recent, but we got a lot of the Legends molds that could have benefited. Um, so I think that's a real shame. I uh, really wish there was more of an actual GoBot theme, but I do like the set for what it is. Now, I would have preferred if maybe they made this set a Selects, that way it's not tied to any particular planet and then still giving us a proper GoBot set, but oh well. So far, the only Galactic Odyssey set that had really anything to do with the planet that it's themed after was the Paradron Medics, the very first one. After that, I mean, Biosphera had the Autobot twins, Dominus had Punch and Barricade, and then Micron came kind of close because they had Micromasters, but they're not the same as Minicon, so I don't know. They weren't even Minicon themed, so whatever. <laughs> Just Obviously Hasbro doesn't care, so why should we, right? All right, let's start off with a look at our Micromasters. Now, all four of these guys are members of the classic team, the Astro Squad. That squad was interesting because it was actually comprised of six members, as opposed to the usual four or two, um, and the six members would divvy up into two MicroMaster combiner teams. So you had your space shuttle guys, you got Fuser, or originally called Phaser, and Blastmaster, and then you got Moonrock and Missile Master here. So these guys are actually all members of that same team, which is pretty cool because originally at retail we just got the space shuttle ones. Uh, sadly, we didn't get the 5th and 6th members, which were Barrage and Heaver. And honestly, I wish they would have, because it would have been a really easy retool. Their vehicle modes pretty much look like this, but with a radar dish on the back. So they could have just done another, you know, Battle Squad retool and just put a radar dish on it. But they didn't, unfortunately. Um, maybe they will. I mean, it'd be such an easy retool when you can finally complete the team. So we'll have to see. Our two ground-based guys are done up in their original color schemes, whereas the space shuttle pair 
they actually get a new color scheme, which does look a bit like it's meant to match these two as far as the reds, but something that the wiki pointed out, and I didn't realize this, but apparently this is designed to look like a different MicroMaster who hails from the Transformers Universe line of all places. And that guy, who I happen to have, is the MicroMaster Stormjet. So let's go ahead and combine these two real quick so you can see what that looks like. Look at that comparison. Like really similar. Not 100%, some slight differences in the color layout, but like almost dead on. You got the same color little windshield and everything. So that's a heck of a deep cut because how many people have heard of the Transformers Universe MicroMaster Stormjet? <laughs> like, I just happen to have that team. Um, I say team because they were part of the MicroMaster Superion that got released, which I don't recommend buying either because all of the combiner kibble suffers some serious gold plastic syndrome. Like, don't buy it. It will break. Mine's broken. So since I've shut off that combined mode, let's go ahead and do it for these two. Oh, I should have this flipped up. It's supposed to be flipped up. Oh, look in here. All right, cool. Now you get their combined vehicles. And I want to show off the retooling they did here. Instead of the usual cannon, he gets this like ladder thing with a five mil post. And this just plugs into the top of that. And very cool. I I'm really happy they went out of their way to retool that because they didn't bother doing that for the recent release. It was actually just the previous Galactic Odyssey set that came out before this. And that was our Metro Squad. Yeah. Fire Guard and Road Burner. So these guys, put them together. They're supposed to be a fire truck, but they got a cannon on the back. So, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't really bother to put a ladder or something. So I am happy they bothered to retool these guys at least. It is weird too that we're getting the same mold twice within the Galactic Odyssey set, but no, oh well, they're different enough. And then of course we have the original versions. If you want to see those, this is the Decepticon Battle Squad from Siege slash Earthrise. They combine as well. So you can see how they all stack up against each other. And then of course we get our original Space Shuttle Astro Squad members that came out earlier in Earthrise, done up in a much more traditional NASA Space Shuttle coloration. And this is actually uh, much more accurate to their G1 look. i get this to close. I know these guys don't really want to play ball and stay nice and flush, but here you go. So yeah, this is actually the proper color scheme for these guys. So if you want like a true representation of, you know, two thirds of the Astro Squad, you'd really want this right here. But yeah, it's up to you if you feel like buying that many different MicroMasters. These two, they look fine together and they do color match a lot better. So I like the way they came out and I, I really love the super deep cut reference there. That was really cool. And if we want to see their weapon modes, well, look no further than flipping this guy upside down and folding a peg out on this one. Right here. Pulling the wings up. There you go. These are supposed to be guns. They look silly. Now, it looks like you don't have access to a handle for this with the missile attached, but this little notch on the top here is actually just the perfect diameter to fit into a five mil hole so it will plug in it's just very shallow so it may not be the best grip uh, if you still have issues keeping that on there though you can always just remove it and you get a better five millimeter post underneath but this will work it is doable we should also show off the interactivity that our space shuttle guys have with that big rocket booster and here is that. And you can see it's done up entirely in white plastic with some silver paint on the bottom. Nice red Autobot symbol on top. And like I said, it is a redeco of the two-part missile launcher type system that came with Double Dealer. This one's got a lot more paint detail on it overall, just to break up the colors more. But yeah, they both work for what they're supposed to be. So that's really cool. And the fact that this can break apart means you can probably use these as weapons for your modulator guys that come in this set. But yeah, this is uh, pretty simple, pretty interesting. 
So to mount him, make sure this front peg is folded in. Fold out the back peg like this. You just plug it in here. Just press it on as well as it'll go. Straighten him out. And there. Now he's meant to be attached to the top of um, over air, but really he'll plug onto anything with a five mil post. So you can get really creative there. And it's just, to me, this is really creative. I, I love the whole idea of the set where they just took a bunch of different toys and even accessories from other toys and just combine them into something cool. It's like the designers just got to be kids for a day and, you know, play their toys and use their imagination. So I love that something official like this came from what probably amounted to a bunch of grown adults reliving their childhood. I mean, what more can you ask for, right? All right, for now, we're going to move on to our modulators. So I'm going to start with Over Air who is a really cool addition to this because the facility that has come to be known as Airwave, along with its MicroMaster, who was originally called Airwave, was repurposed in Japan. They kept all the same colors and everything and just made them Autobots and renamed the MicroMaster over air. Now, because they didn't want to release a toy in this toy line that was, you know, virtually identical to an existing one, you know, Airwave, they decided to give this guy some new colors, which carry the same overall look, just with some tweaks. Replaced all the light gray with this really dark metallic gray, uh, some of the black with a gold accent, and added some paint apps. Honestly, makes him look quite a bit more premium than the standard Airwave release. And what's really cool is that the MicroMaster Over Air actually got released during Siege as part of that 10-pack from Target. And it always felt a little odd having him with Airwave because Over Air is, you know, an Autobot. The Airwave facility is a Decepticon facility. So now we get this. So you get Over Air riding Over Air. And this makes for a bit of a break in the common trend because what they had been doing with some instances in War for Cybertron when you get two characters that share a name is that they end up changing the name of one of them. We saw this happen with Ironworks. When they released him as a facility, they changed the name of the Ironworks MicroMaster to Iron Tread to differentiate them. In this case, I guess they're just saying screw it and they're just both called over air. So again, whether or not these facilities are meant to have any sort of sentience or if they're just kind of like an extension of their MicroMaster partner, that's kind of how I look at it. Like they're kind of a uh, remotely controlled mech. You know, I think it works out pretty well for that. So this little guy finally gets a proper facility to hang out with instead of a uh, evil Decepticon version. So I think that's really cool. You can now have him taken off, have some fun with your set. Now if we want to do some comparisons here, slide him over. So this is Airwave, the original version of this mold. And you can see the overall similarities in the colors, right? You can see how this guy looks kind of like a premium version of Airwave. In fact, the vibe that I get from this pairing is think standard Siege Megatron and then Netflix Siege Megatron. You know, shinier colors, darker colors, more premium accents. That's kind of how I see this. And I think it's a really clever way of keeping the overall look kind of the same, but still making them different because a lot of people I think would not go for this set if this guy just looked like this one with Autobot symbols. So I'm glad they did that. And it's kind of funny because they put so much effort into recoloring a guy that's supposed to be identical when we got this. <laughs> like, one of the laziest recolors. This is Select's Hot House, who is not even supposed to be just a straight airport, but, you know, they just said, eh, make, make Airwave red and we'll call it Hot House because red, fire trucks, right? Yeah, uh, I was really disappointed with this guy and how low effort he was. So it, it's... You know, better late than ever, I guess, to put some effort into a redeco of this mold. All right, here's a look at the weapons platform mode. And while I will say that over air looks really nice in these colors, and this does actually look like some sort of a, you know, high tech base, this mode is still an absolute floppy mess due to the uh, lack of friction of this connection here and the fact that this little part that's supposed to raise up an aim can only move like that much. So even though this version of it easily looks the best, it's still my least favorite mode and just kind of the most useless one. But as with 
any alt mode of any Transformer, you can just always choose to ignore it if you don't like it. And I fully intend to ignore this one. All right, now we get the much more standard base mode, uh, my personal favorite for this figure. And also the only one that actually works is a city building base mode because it's the only one that actually has the airlock connections like available to use. I, yeah, I know it's a weird choice, right? How they make base modes that can't actually connect anything. So yeah, this is just your standard airstrip mode with control tower and pretty nice for having this guy on though. He's actually way too big to run on this thing going down the middle. Just, he would just crash into this every time. So, you know, it, it works as long as you just set it still, let it look like it's taken off, but can't actually run down the runway. So yeah, I, I like the looks of it. I, I love the extra decals they put on here, not decals, but uh, tampos right here, especially it's a little like loading zone type thing. Then you can compare it to regular Airwave, and you can see it's just much more impressive looking. A lot more paint apps, a lot more color variation. And we'll put in old, old Poopy McGee here, old Lazy Selects toy himself that can't be bothered to be his own bot. And again, I still think this is by far just the superior paint job for this mode too. It just works so much better. It really pops. It's got so much more detailing that make it look more realistic, like it's an actual mini base. Like, yeah, you could say the gold coloring on the tower might be a little unrealistic, but yeah, it still looks really nice. I dig it. Plus, it actually has painted windows here, which is really cool. All right, now we're going to move on to Ironworks for a bit. And again, this is the same character that was released way back in Wave 1 of Earthrise, just given a whole new color scheme to match up against his teammates and Skylinks and all that. I think it's a missed opportunity to introduce yet another modulator into the mix. I don't know why they just named him Ironworks again. I find that kind of lazy. Could have come up with a new name, used a pre-existing one, something, but it is what it is. So this is Ironworks in his classic communications tower mode or, you know, the Earthrise approximation of that. And overall, it holds together as well as before. There is one pretty glaring difference, though, is that his little hook arm thing, his crane arm, is really, really loose. And specifically the hole right here, five mil hole, it just spins very freely, comes right off. It's not tight at all. So if you wiggle this around too much, pick it up, this will fall right off or it'll just swing around. Um, it's unfortunate, it really is, because uh, it's only the third use of this mold, and I don't expect to see QC issues that early, but I don't know, maybe it's just my copy. Hopefully not everybody's is like that. Let's go ahead and give him a little group shot with the standard colored ironworks, who is you know, done up in his classic G1 colors, as well as the retool grease pit. You can see that the mode's a little different for Grease Pit because he does have some new parts and pieces that have to be accommodated for. So there's a bit of a change there, but as far as these two, it's exactly the same thing. And, uh, you know, as far as just what color scheme works best for Ironworks himself, I'm still a fan of the classic one. It just looks, you know, has those dark industrial colors that you would expect to see at some sort of like a shipyard or Ironworks setup. This really only works because of the setting. So it's good for the set, but as a standalone, I'd still recommend getting this guy. All right, now because this new mode that's shown in the instructions has never been done before, I'm gonna go ahead and show the transformation for that. So go ahead, remove his little cannon bits, flip his little thigh pieces down, with a pointing just straight forward like that. Move his little arm block, flip this peg in, close his little shovel scoop thing, and you flip this top peg out, like so. Now you're gonna remove this panel, as well as the bottom one. Fold these out to the side, kind of straighten everything out here. Right, so you get this. You take his little leg panel, Use little thigh nubs to plug into the kneecaps, like that. Take your ramp with the side connector facing towards you, if you have everything oriented the way I do. Put it on 
here, and then you're plug it onto this block, which luckily doesn't have paint on the connectors like the original Ironworks, where you scrape the paint off after connecting it a few times. Managed to think about it and only paint the side instead of the edges. All right, you're gonna remove his little crane hook, take the gun off, plug it onto the end of the crane arm, get the pegs pointing down, plug the crane arm to here. Now here's the interesting thing. It's not loose on this connection. It's actually fairly tight. Well, the peg doesn't want to stay straight up, but never does on this mold. So it works a lot better in this mode than it does in the other one. And then we take our little hook, connect it on the side with the hook part facing down. And there you go. This is his new extra base mode. Um, not entirely sure what the point of it is, it's neat, uh, not the most useful thing. It does have airlock connections that are available. There's one here, but it's going, you know, diagonal. And then you got the sum on the side, but it's on upside down panels. So you'd have to connect them to other panels that are upside down as well. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure why this exists. Uh, originally, I thought it was going to be part of the combined base mode. It's not. They just use his standard non-combatant base mode for that. And then I thought, well, maybe they just did it to give him an additional base mode to, you know, match the number that Over Air has, except there are additional base modes for this mold. Uh, specifically, there's like a really junky ramp mode, but there was also one that was shown off with the Grease Pit version and those instructions. So I'm not entirely sure why they came up with this. I mean, it's fine. It's pretty nice. I actually like it a bit more than the Communications Tower. But it's just, it's an enigma to me because I don't know why it exists. Now, of course, we need our group shot. So let's slide them over and bring out the other ironworks. Then Grease Pit taking on its best approximation of this form. And it is what it is. In theory, he can connect to his mold mates that are in this mode. Um, not side by side like this, but you can do it at angles. It'll actually line up. So you can have some fun with that, make like a little three-way weapon emplacement or something. And if you get a fourth one, you make a four-way weapon emplacement. Like a square of doom. Okay, and now we get Ironworks' more standard base mode. Just simple rampways, a crane, a little station here. And again, just like over air or airwaves standard base mode, this is just kind of my favorite. It has the most connectivity and is just kind of the most realistic looking one. Now, I like the bit of tampos they gave him here. Uh, really helps detail him as some sort of like space-based, you know, facility. Something you'd see in like a lunar colony. Got all sorts of gauges and conduits and stuff. Pretty nice. Plus, he gets the little hazard striping here. And that's it for tampo details. Again, this is something that really only works in the context of it being space-based, because the colors are just really out there. <laughs> really, really bizarre. But it is very cool for what it is. You know, Ironworks was the original modulator, kind of set the standard, and he doesn't disappoint here. And then if you want to see the origin of that standard, let's pull out the original Ironworks so you can see how they differ, how they compare, all that. And, you know, like I said, much more tampo detail going on here. And then we'll even pull out Grease Pit, who you'll notice in this mode is pretty markedly different from the other two. Because Ironworks was designed with Grease Pit in mind and actually has, like, the connections and everything necessary to achieve this, given the right accessories. Right, like the gas pumps can plug into any version of them and all that. So, a lot more thought and love was put into grease pit as opposed to the you know phoned in effort of a uh, hothouse so i really appreciate this guy for what he is overall even though i still prefer the original coloration of ironworks as a standalone figure this does look very nice and still has that very premium feel that over air does especially the nice shiny gray roadways here now you may be wondering why i showed off the modulators in the order that i did well, it's because these specific base modes are what are used to create their combined mode. So let's go ahead and start putting that together. All right, now it's time to start really having some fun. So we have our two standard base modes, which are used for this combination. 
Uh, before you start connecting things, go ahead and flip this little post out on over air, because you're going to need that. It'll be easier to do before they get connected. All right, so to combine these two, you're connecting them at these points right here. So just push everything together. See how well they color coordinate. It's really nice. So you get all that set up. And take our little rocket booster thing. Take your space shuttle guys, Fuser and Blastmaster. Peg it out. Plug them on there, get them nice and straight, like so. And you're gonna plug this onto that post on over air. Straighten everything out. Let's move this camera up, huh? There we go. This does lean a little bit. Doesn't really seem to be a way around that. Just a little too much give for its own good. All right, so you get this, and then of course you can always put our land vehicles on here. And here it is. This is our combined base mode. Now, if you're a longtime collector, big G1 fan, this might look vaguely familiar. And there is a reason for that. Not only were these guys done up in a way to mesh well with Skylinks. This combined base mode is supposed to be a direct reference to the rocket base mode that was included with the original MicroMaster Countdown. So it's not exactly the same, but it is meant to be basically that same base. And you can really see the inspiration there, especially the whole rocket thing going on. Now, you know, this feel is incomplete. If only we had a Countdown. Man, if only that guy was released recently. Oh yeah, we do have Countdown. So he was released with Omega Supreme. So check that out. You can finally reunite him with his classic MicroMaster base. And that was really neat because a lot of people questioned, you know, was he going to get a base when he was released alongside Omega? Because normally those two were not included together. It was, it was kind of a random inclusion. Nobody really knew where the whole Countdown thing came from. So... Yeah, now you can finally go ahead and slap them on here and have what feels like a nice, complete base mode for him. And he gets company, right? Because he also gets two-thirds of the Astro Squad to hang out with him. And they color match very well with each other, these kind of deep reds with a off-white or tannish color. So I dig this. This is just a really creative way to get the most out of these molds. Again, it's like the designers were just kids with a toy box and they were having fun. They we're like, hey man, you know it'd be like totally cool. And they made this and like, let's sell it. And I'm all for it. Like, I love creative stuff like this. And I feel like creativity is something that's honestly kind of lacking in modern Transformers. And I don't think that's on the design team. I really don't. I, I think it's more of a corporate thing, right? They, they don't like taking these big risks. They just want to keep recycling the same themes, the same characters over and over. Uh, there's a pretty big YouTuber out there and um, somebody who's been active in the community for a long time, a guy named Proto Man who does the Transformer Slag podcast, and he always refers to them as the Legendary Seven, right? Like your Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, Starscream, Grimlock, Soundwave, you know, like... Yeah, it's true. They, they've really been playing it safe lately by just pretty much having those characters. So this is a lot of fun because there are just deep cuts everywhere. You get a zone-exclusive MicroMaster base. You get most of a long-lost MicroMaster team with two of the team members referencing a one-off that was like a KB exclusive for a short time. And you get the rocket base. So you get all these really cool references with what amount to really a bunch of nobodies, right, in the grand scheme of things. A lot of characters that most people honestly have probably never heard of. Heck, I never heard of them until, you know, Earthrise came out and I really started looking back into the whole MicroMaster thing and getting a good feel for what came before. So, huge fan of this. Of course, this base doesn't exist in a vacuum. There's one more really awesome thing we get to do with it. All right, now for, in my opinion, the coolest part of this whole thing, we got our combined base mode with Skylinks. You got these guys connected. You can see the ramp colors match almost perfectly. Maybe not 100%. This is a little more metallic, but it's close enough. And you can see how well the other, other uh, color coordination goes with the blue, the red, the white. Uh, and I don't know why these guys are like this weird off-white compared to the rest of the set. I don't know. 
kind of an odd choice. But yeah, I mean, this is what it's all about. <laughs> they really went out of their way to make this whole setup work, and I just love it. I think this looks so cool, and you know, it's going to look really great as part of a larger, you know, MicroMaster base or city, which uh, fully intend to show off whenever I do that previously mentioned Earthrise retrospective. I have a lot of fun. Probably take a while. Probably have to use up my whole dining room again, but we're going to do it because sometimes you just got to do these things. So yeah, I absolutely love this. And this part right here is enough to sell me on this set just by itself because I don't really feel that Earthrise as a whole lived up to its promise with the whole MicroMaster gimmick. It just, it really fell short. I don't think we got enough modulators or base modes or anything to really build, you know, the kind of cities that people had in their minds. It really would have helped if we got some recolors of Omega and Scorponok. You know, get your Omega Sentinels, your Black Zarek. Really help flesh out these bases. And more of the ramp weaponizer guys would have been good too. I mean, you shouldn't have to buy like 10 of the same toy <laughs> to build a decent set of roads. Right? Typically, most people buy one copy of a toy. So, more variety there would have been great. But you know what? For what this is, this is amazing. This is what the MicroMaster concept is all about, and I love it. Alright, now that we've gotten that part done, let's go ahead and just kind of round this off by looking at the various robot modes for our guys. So, we have our MicroMasters here, against the Astro Squad, and they all look really good. These guys are more or less redechoes of the Battle Squad, so you're not going to see any new sculpting or anything. They're not going to be super accurate to their G1 appearance. And then these two are accurate as far as sculpting, but again, they have the modified colors, so you know, they're just kind of doing their own thing. And again, they look fine. They look really nice together. Blastmaster here still has the same balancing issue that his normal version does, and it's usually best to just kind of have him crouch a little bit just so that his little wings in the back can help support him, because otherwise he tends to just fall backwards. But at least there's something you can do for him, unlike that uh, really awful Hot Rod Patrol mold. And here's a quick look at all the mold mates again. Got your standard Astro Squad over here. You get your Battle Squad, you get your Metro Squad guys. So it may have taken till after Earthrise is like officially ended, but we're finally actually starting to army build up our MicroMasters a little bit. And this is starting to feel like the Unicron Trilogy, where you're just getting this army of little warriors to go with your big guys. And I like it. I like the variation of the colors, the molds, uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the variation of the molds. Not usually. Uh, so I do appreciate when they go out of the way to do retools like the missile here. Really dig that. And moving back to our modulators, we get a look at Over Air with his robot mode. And again, I just, I love his colors. Like, even if they're not accurate to Japanese G1 over air, just gorgeous looking. I love how you can really see all the gear and tech details inside his chest now. He's got the gold face, the gold weapons. He just looks so good and looks like he's actually made of machinery and not just, you know, plastic. And of course, we can compare him to Airwave, who's much more kitty looking, you know, typically wouldn't see bright orange at an airport. And then we can also bring in Mr. Lazy himself, Hothouse. So, yeah, I still maintain this is my favorite version of the mold. I just think he looks fantastic. Even if his color scheme is just kind of taken from out of nowhere, you can still see the inspiration. You can still see how his layout's very similar to Airwaves, but still manages to do his own thing. And I just really, really enjoy this guy for what he is. And lastly, we get another look at Ironworks. Now, we'll say that all the white on him does kind of make him look a bit washed out, especially with bright lighting like this. Here. Now you can make his surface detailing better. Look at that. Uh, but he is still really cool. I mean, he's just supposed to be a space station version of Ironworks, and he succeeds at that. See how he compares to standard ironworks, as well as grease pit. I can, you know, refrain from smacking my lights around while I do this. 
Uh, one thing you'll notice, big difference, is that so standard Ironworks has like an all red face, like red visor, red uh, mouth plate. This guy actually breaks up a bit. He gets the light blue visor, which is more common with Autobots, but he gets a silver mouth plate. So that is interesting. Actually puts his face looking a bit closer to Grease Pits here. So yeah, um, in this case, I don't really have a, a favorite version. They're just each doing their own thing, and I think they all do their thing very well. And this is going to be our final group shot for the review. So you can see I've got all six of our guys together. I've gone and placed the halves of the rocket booster there with our modulators, and there are a few different ways they can be wielded. Over air is unfortunately a bit more limited in how he can wield these weapons because he's got all this arm kibble that sticks up here, and he can't like hold either of these actually in his hand. So pretty much he just wields them as like shoulder mounted accessories. But either way, it looks cool. It is nice that these can be utilized and they're not just extra parts that can be, you know, tossed aside when not in use. And yeah, overall this set is, uh, well, amazing in my opinion. This is the most fun I've had doing a review in quite a while because you just feel like a child playing with this whole little playset. And these can do so much. They have so many different modes, different combinations. They're just a lot of fun to mess with. Combine that with the crossplay with Skylinks, the airlock compatibility. I mean, this is a great, great set. In my opinion, easily the best out of all of the Galactic Odyssey sets. In fact, all the others just feel really weak by comparison. The only other one that I actually find to be good is the first one, the Paradron Medics. So, honestly, we kept those two sets and then just scrapped the others and did something better for those planets, I'd be a lot happier. I found, like, the three in between just completely boring and lame. So, this is cool. And... I would love to see more stuff like this, where they get a little creative and mix and match things. I don't know what the fate of Micromasters is past the War for Cybertron trilogy. Uh, they're not present in the Kingdom chapter at all, and nobody knows what's coming after the trilogy yet except, you know, Hasbro and Takara themselves. But I, I hope they continue the Micromasters in some fashion. I'd love to see more bases, more modulators, uh, the Micromasters themselves. It's just such a fun little concept, and though I don't think they'll be the focus of any toy lines moving forward like they were for Siege and Earthrise, I'd still like to see them sprinkled in here and there. I'm not sure how they do that from a marketing perspective with, you know, the size classes and all that, but I'd like to see it. Uh, especially since now the Decepticons are outnumbered 2 to 1 with modulators, so I'd like to see something to boost those ranks. Uh, as far as any gripes with the set, I don't really have any. Uh, there are some little things that I would have preferred slightly. I would have liked Ironworks, as well as Fuser and Blastmaster, to be given new identities as separate characters, just to help flush out the roster that much more. I'm not really crazy about same character redecos unless they serve some sort of a cultural or fictional purpose. In this case, you know, they're just recolored for the sake of blending in which is really not my favorite thing. Would have preferred new characters. Heck, these guys being based off of Stormjet, you could have named like one of them Storm, one of them Jet, and they combined into Stormjet. Like that would have been really cool and a really great way to hammer home an obscure character. But again, these are really minor grievances because they just pale in comparison to what we get. So many great references, such a cool unified color scheme, a great play pattern. I love this set. And it is the most expensive by far of the Galactic Odyssey sets, but, you know, look at what you're getting. You're getting two Deluxes, two MicroMaster teams, and some added accessories, so it's not a bad deal. So, yeah, um, if you haven't picked this up and it's still available, I'm not sure if it is, absolutely get it. If you have any love for the MicroMaster concept, you will love this. Especially if you have Skylinks, because, yeah, they, that whole set is just phenomenal. And I'm going to get a lot of good use out of this when I eventually build the whole MicroMaster City for the Earthrise retrospective. I'm still currently waiting on one more thing to come in, and that's the Selects Deep cover. Because even though he's not technically part of Earthrise, he, he's kind of part of Earthrise. 
And that guy should be coming into me anytime now. So once I get his review done, I would expect that retrospective very soon. So yeah, uh, yeah, pick this up. You will not be disappointed. One of the coolest things I've played with in a very long time. But of course, that is just my perspective. Now, I really want to know what you all think of this set. Are you as excited for this as I am? Do you think this is, you know, something really cool that they've done here? Or do you not like it for some reason? Either because of, I don't know, the colors, the figures themselves. Are you just not interested in modulators? Or is it maybe too expensive, too obscure for you? Any and all feedback's always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this admittedly lengthy review of the very enjoyable Transformers Earthrise Galactic Odyssey Botropolis Rescue Mission. And with all that said, I will see you next time.